Hi everyone. In my previous video, I showed how to set up a WordPress blog in Amazon Web Services. We walked through creating an Elastic Cloud Computing instance, which is really a virtual server within AWS. We installed WordPress on it and we configured WordPress all in about five to ten minutes. What we need to do now is point an, an existing domain name that we have to that EC2 instance. So when you access your blog, you're not accessing it by the IP address, you're accessing it, accessing it by the domain name that you've previously registered. And this is fairly simple to do. You want to go back into your uh, AWS Management Console, um, go back into EC2. The first thing we need to do is establish an IP address that we can permanently assign to our instance here. So remember, every time we stop and start an instance, you will have a new IP address assigned to you. We want to avoid that because we are going to uh, map our domain name to an IP address. And if it's constantly changing by starting and stopping an EC2 instance, it's not going to provide us a whole lot of value. Otherwise, we're going to have to constantly go back into our domain management system and update an IP address, and we don't want to do that. So we want a static IP address assigned here. So luckily for us, Amazon provides that ability, and it's called an Elastic IP. So select Elastic IPs from uh, your EC2 management console here. You want to allocate a new address, and pretty simple, you just select Allocate, and it is going to give us our IP address. Amazon does not charge you for creating an Elastic IP address. As long as that Elastic IP address or static IP address is attached to an EC2 instance. If it's not attached or if you stop an instance from running or you terminate an instance without removing this Elastic IP, you will get charged for it. As long as it's attached and the instance is running, there's no charge. And the charge isn't that great. It's like a half a cent an hour. But if you kind of forget to remove this, over time that cost is going to add up. So make note of that IP address. Close your screen here. Select, make sure it's ticked. Select Actions and you want to associate an address. And it's a resource type of an instance. You want to select the instance that you want to attach it to. And it gives us our, our name here. So select this instance. And you don't need to worry about a private IP you don't need to worry about this. So click on associate, associate. And if we go back to our instances, select our instance name, you will see we now have the new static IP address assigned to it. So if I right click here and I go to that, there's our blog with our post that we added. And I'm guessing if I try to refresh here, it will not find this because we, we released this dynamic IP address back into the pool. And you can see it's sitting here clocking away. Now that we have our our static IP address assigned, what we can do is 
go into our domain registrar and link our domain name to this IP address. So in my case here, I am using GoDaddy. So I went into my DNS management settings for the domain that I want to associate with that IP. And what you're looking to change is your A record. So currently my A record is mapped to the IP address within GoDaddy. I want to change that. So click on edit and we will just type in could have copied but I want to be difficult 5245110144 Leave the time to live at custom 600 seconds which is 10 minutes click save here and you can see now our um, www for that domain name is going to be mapped to our new IP address. A handy tool that, that I've used in the past to check how your DNS changes are being propagated or pushed out to all the different domain name servers across the world is a, a tool called DNS Checker. And what you can do here is enter your domain name here search the type of records that you have, which in our case is an A record, remember, type A, and it will show you the different IP addresses that are pointing to, uh, or that your domain name is pointing to. So in our case here, we are going to enter, write any triumph, do a search here, and you can see um, our change is actually looks like it's been propagated for the most part. It can take a few days for you to see this being pushed out to all the different domain name servers, but in our case here, it looks like uh, everything's done already. So let's take a look to, to make sure we can access our um, our domain name And there we have it. So we entered our domain name. It's, it's accessing our IP address as we expected. There's our post that we added, some text, our hello world post. Everything's working. That's all you really need to do to point your an existing domain name to your EC2 instance.